Starship has been, without a doubt, the most ambitious and technically challenging project in SpaceX's entire history. It's the biggest rocket they've ever built, both in size and ambition. And instead of waiting until every element is perfected, they've adopted a fast-paced, iterative approach. One launch at a time, they're learning what works and what doesn't. So far, SpaceX has launched Starship eight times. And with each test, there's been progress, but also problems, sometimes spectacular ones. Most recently, Flight 8 ended in a massive explosion that echoed around the world, both literally and online. That fiery finale left many wondering, will Flight 9 finally deliver the clean performance SpaceX has been chasing? From the looks of it, SpaceX is pulling out all the stops. Engineers seem to have gone back to the drawing board and emerged with a long list of hardware upgrades. Both Starship's upper stage and the Super Heavy booster have received serious design changes. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what's different this time and how these changes might set Flight 9 apart. But before we dive into the details, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates about Starship, SpaceX's future launches, or any of the groundbreaking progress they're making in the space industry. Now let's get into it. First off, there's been a major shift in the roadmap. SpaceX has decided to skip what would have been the V2 version of the Starship system entirely. Instead of taking a gradual approach, they're leaping ahead straight to V3 an iteration that was originally thought to be at least a year away. This decision speaks volumes about how confident SpaceX feels about the next steps. While Flight 9 might not be the first fully V3 integrated launch, it's already incorporating several elements from that next-gen design. We've seen signs of this in recent hardware, particularly in a test prototype called Tank 17. This tank gave the public a sneak peek into what kind of features might become standard on upcoming Starships, one of the biggest surprises so far. The booster is now getting heat shield tiles. That's right, tiles on the Super Heavy, not just the upper stage. Up until now, those ceramic tiles were reserved for the spaceship that re-enters Earth's atmosphere from orbit. But re-entry data shows that even the bottom of the booster gets exposed to brutal heat during descent and engine relight. Earlier boosters like B-12 showed visible burn damage after landing attempts. Clearly, that's not sustainable for a vehicle designed to fly over and over again. So, for Flight 9, we may be seeing early stages of a new protective layer on the booster's rear, likely incorporating metallic heat shield tiles. These aren't just any tiles either. They're visibly different, sleeker, shinier, and seemingly thinner than their ceramic versions. The change in material suggests better heat resistance and, more importantly, lower weight. And in spaceflight, every gram matters. By shedding unnecessary mass from the heat protection system, SpaceX can improve performance, payload capacity, or even structural safety margins. The hexagonal pattern of the tiles is still there, but each tile now appears to have small mounting features, either for improved fastening or possibly to create micro gaps for thermal expansion. That means fewer tiles lost during flight and a much stronger, more reusable system. Reducing weight in the heat shield has another side benefit. It might let SpaceX eliminate the enormous metal shield that used to cover the engines on earlier boosters. Fewer layers, fewer parts, and faster turnaround. That's what SpaceX is aiming for. And these upgrades are all nudging the system closer to being genuinely reusable without needing days or weeks of refurbishment after every launch. Looking deeper at the structure itself, there are changes that suggest more than just thermal improvements. Some components in the lower section of the test tank show added ports, mounts, and even mysterious connection points. These might be related to fueling upgrades, structural reinforcement, or even ground support integration. One odd detail is a diamond-shaped pin near the top, a feature whose purpose remains unknown but might be tied to stacking or refueling procedures. Also worth noting is that the internal plumbing, mounting hardware, and exterior hooks have all been slightly altered. These may sound like minor changes, but they have big implications for operations, especially with lifting, stacking, and catching systems that now play a role in almost every Starship flight. 
Although the booster's grid fins haven't been front and center in the recent updates, there are strong hints that those might be changing too. The fins on previous flights were effective but left room for improvement in control precision and thermal resistance. There's speculation that SpaceX is now moving towards stronger, possibly differently shaped fins to help guide the massive booster more reliably during descent and landing attempts. On the propulsion side, while Flight 9 is not yet confirmed to be using the next-gen Raptor 3 engines, it's possible that newer Raptor 2 variants with some of the planned Raptor 3 improvements may be on board. Musk has been hyping the upcoming engine version for its insane chamber pressure and improved efficiency, and some of those improvements could trickle down into Flight 9 hardware even before the official Raptor 3 rollout. All of these changes are aligned with one overarching goal, full reusability. Not just land it once and refurbish for months reusability, but a routine rapid turnaround system that can launch, land, and launch again with minimal delay. SpaceX has long said this is the key to making space travel affordable and sustainable, and Flight 9 might be the closest they've come to achieving that vision. The next few weeks are going to be very important for the future of Starship. The booster that SpaceX plans to use for Flight 9 is already being put together at Starbase Texas. Different parts of it, like the engine sections and dome rings, have been seen moving around the site, showing that work is in full swing. Right now, all signs point to SpaceX preparing for a possible launch in July or August 2025. But, as usual with Starship, that date could easily change. Originally, some people expected Flight 9 to happen as early as May 2025, especially after Flight 8 launched back in March. But that mission ended in a big explosion just before stage separation, and since then, SpaceX has taken extra time to work on important upgrades. That means the timeline has been pushed back a bit, but for good reason. One thing adding to the confusion is that it's not yet clear exactly which booster will fly. Booster 13 and 14 were considered early on, but now there's talk that Booster 15 or even Booster 18 might be used. Booster 18 in particular is linked to the full V3 upgrade and is still being built. This overlap in production has made it hard to know which hardware is truly meant for Flight 9. Meanwhile, testing is still underway. Cryogenic tests, where tanks are filled with extremely cold liquid nitrogen, are happening almost daily. These tests help make sure the rocket can handle the cold conditions of spaceflight. Once those are done, SpaceX will perform static fire tests, where the engines are fired while the booster is held down. These tests are critical to confirm that everything is working properly. If any problems show up during testing, the launch could be delayed further. SpaceX has always followed a build-fast, test-often approach, and they aren't afraid to stop everything to fix a flaw if it shows up. So while they are aiming for a July or August 2025 launch, there's still a chance it could happen a bit later, maybe even September. Whatever the final launch date ends up being, Flight 9 will be a major milestone. It will be the result of all the lessons learned from Flights 1 through 8. And with so many upgrades in place, this could be the most advanced and capable Starship yet. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.